Many of you in my comments section have asked for a solution to be able to stream with your overlays and your face cam and things like that in OBS Studio and still be able to record a master copy such as with the original HD60 Pro without overlays and still have your raw gameplay accessible. Elgato has just released a software update that sort of gives you this ability, this idea. Now this will require super high-end hardware and this is part of the reason the OBS team themselves have never, have never implemented this as there is a lot that goes into it to do it right and it still requires a lot of hardware but Elgato has recently released a solution which I'm going to show you right now. Useful tech education and gaming nostalgia that won't put you to sleep. Get subscribed and turn on notifications so you won't miss the next guide. So to set this up, you will need a, f a few things. This will, of course, require Elgato's 4K60 Pro capture card, or at least their 4K capture utility. In theory, you might be able to use that with their other capture cards. I hadn't actually thought about that prior to recording this, but I guess that's possible. You do need their 4K capture utility downloaded from their website. You will also need OBS Studio installed with the OBS NDI plugin, which I do, of course, have a video featuring that subject linked in the video description below if you want to see a full breakdown of how that plugin works. Install the plugin and reboot your computer. Now you're good to go. Make sure your console that you're piping into your 4K capture utility is already enabled as I ran into some issues where if it was turned off first the 4K capture utility kind of freaked out even though OBS was working. Anyway, go ahead and open up your 4K capture utility. And of course, you will want to make sure you're on a relatively recent version. The current version is, here it is, 1.0.3, and that is the one where this tool is introduced. If not, you will need to click check for updates and install an update. To access the new quote-unquote stream link capability, hit control and click on the gear icon. Down here, you have enable stream output. They have this hidden and unchecked by default because this will require a metric crap load of resources in order to work because not only do you need the graphics power to record presumably with NVENC or AMD's graphics card in the 4K capture utility software but then it's sending an NDI signal through your computer to OBS and then you need OBS to be able to compress the footage as well but if you check that and hit save then it is sending out this view via NDI now you're able to record and do as you wish start and stop recording from the 4K capture utility and it's still, no matter what, as long as this program is open, sending an NDI signal. So then we go ahead and open up OBS Studio. Here I'm going to set up, I have a Twitch test profile. I'm going to add a source, and we're going to add a NDI source. And if you don't have this, you have not installed the NDI plugin correctly and need to start back at that point. Add a new NDI source. We'll call this 4K Stream Link. Click OK and it automatically detects straight from this computer the 4K capture utility signal that it is sending over. Of course, you want highest quality, internal sync, and then you can use allow hardware acceleration if you want. I haven't really noticed a difference personally, and hit OK. Takes a second to load the signal, and whammo, we have copy here, copy here. Now you will see that I am already using some resources without even recording on either software. I have about 32% of my GTX 1080 being used up on just the graphics card itself. That's not the video encoding engine, that's just the rendering engine here. And then my CPU cores are being utilized. Now, you will notice here, I have very high-end software, or software, wow, very high-end hardware in order to be able to do this. Now, you probably don't need a full i9 36 core like I have, but you will definitely need a higher-end computer. Now, you can start recording in 4K Capture Utility. Now this is, of course, based on what you have set in your settings. I'll go ahead and tell it to stop recording. Ah, uh, where we go here? Recording. By default, it uses my NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080 for NVENC, which is what most people should do because software recording at 4K, just my computer can barely handle it. So we'll record this. Now, most modern graphics cards, which will be the ones that can handle this kind of recording in the first place, can handle two streams of NVENC recording, which means you can record this with NVENC as well. I would not recommend two streams of 4K, but if you wanted to record this like my normal here, my normal Twitch profile, I wanted to come in here with a quick adjustment to what I just said. I just said you can record NVENC if you wanted to, you actually cannot. 
uh, as the 4K capture utility locks other apps out of Envy, which is an issue I ran into with Adobe apps back in 2017 and has since been fixed with modern OBS versions. But I switched to my normal Twitch profile, which is recording via InVink hardware encoding, as you can see here. Uh, and I can start recording that on its own. That's fine. And I can come over here and I can't start recording on the 4K capture utility. Or same thing, if I stop recording on OBS, start recording on capture utility, start recording in OBS, it's locked out the InVink. Now, technically these cards can support multiple streams of InVink encoding at the same time, but currently the apps lock each other out. So you will have to record with X264. But in theory, you're streaming with X264 anyway over here in OBS, so should be fine. Or you can, since you're just streaming anyway, ideally you're streaming here, recording here, and just for the higher quality gameplay. So if you want a stream copy, then you can set up a recording profile to just use the stream encoder itself in case you need your audio tracks. And then go ahead and I'm not going to stream right now, but since it's using the same encoder, you'll see the same results. Start recording. It's using X264. You're going to see cores really start to do some work. GPU engine starting to do some work here. Of course, we're just at the title screen, but it makes no difference really. You can see CPUs really starting to kick up here. Now my computer, again, my computer can handle it fine. I, I seem to have no issues. I haven't done any extensive testing, but it is handling it. But on lower end hardware, you're going to start noticing some, some issues. Now one thing you might notice here, if I put these kind of side by side, there is a delay. There's an added delay between here and here. Like if I navigate through the menus, there's a little bit of an extra de delay. Now the audio will be equally delayed with the video since it's coming through on the same feed. So that's fine. The only issue will be this slight delay syncing it up to your microphone or face cam. But Honestly, it's like a split second. It's not even a full second delay or anything. So your reactions are still pretty much going to be in line. So if you want to dive into the delay capabilities to add your overlays and things like that to have them delayed, you could do that. I I'm not going to recommend it. Like it's going to bother some people, but for the most part, it's going to be fine. So this is a really cool feature that people have been requesting. Now, of course, this is exclusive to Elgato hardware and you need powerful software or powerful hard computer hardware wow i, I really keep mix mixing that up today <laughs> you will need powerful computer hardware and you will need elgato capture hardware to make this work but it is doable and this is one such solution and there is a reason this has not been implemented into obs before because running that kind of dual encoder is very resource intensive and pretty messy on the whole here you go just wanted to showcase this new, that's not it, <laughs> the new 4K Capture Utility Streamlink. This is, of course, an alpha, which means there will be bugs, there will be issues, they are looking for feedback. If there is features or options to it that you're looking for, be sure to comment here in this Reddit thread. And it's also something that they're not 100% certain that they're keeping around, which is why it's kind of hidden and only... It, it, this is kind of in a testing phase, so test it out, see how it works on your rig, let them know, and provide feedback and we can see where this goes. They're still working on things like flashback recording and things like that, but this is their first whack at introducing master copy to hardware that doesn't have an onboard encoder. And there are good reasons and good explanations as to why there's not an actual encoder chip on the 4K60 Pro and I have a completely different video in the works coming on that very soon. If you like the video, hit the like button, get subscribed for more awesome tech videos. I'm Eples Vox here to make tech easier and more fun and I'll see you in the next tutorial. This video is sponsored by viewers like you. Our videos would not be possible without the generosity of those of you who contribute to one of our fan funding options, be it DonorBox, Twitch subscriptions, direct contributions via PayPal, or Patreon. To join our inner circle and get behind the scenes looks at videos, go to eposvox.com support to learn more, and join us on Discord at eposvox.com discord. Thanks!